G'day, this is Captain Uber, and this is an anti-armor lever action rifle with 25% faster fire rate and plus 50 DR whilst aiming. Not a terrible trio of legendary effects having a lever gun. The fire rate does give you a little bit of a rate of fire boost, and it is noticeable if you are used to using the uh, non-fire rate variants. We'll give you a little bit of a demonstration later on just to see what that difference is. And the plus 50 DR whilst aiming, kind of nice if you want to sniper stuff and aim down the sights, because uh, if you take any panic fire... The damage will be slightly reduced, but we've got a suppressor, so that probably won't be super necessary. If anything, I'd like the extra crit gaining, because I'm going to be using this at full health. If I wanted to really bring out the performance on this, I'd be at Nerd Rage Threshold, Adrenal Reaction, Nerd Rage, Unyielding Bonuses, all of that stuff, and then the crits after every shot, like every second shot is a critical. So if I really wanted to do that, we could really crush enemies, but we're going to stay at full health. We're going to get a little bit of a health kick today, see if we can stay at a higher percentage of health throughout this in video. We'll see how we go. Hard and receiver with a lined long barrel and a true stock. Usually I go true for both of those, but mix it up a little bit today, make it slightly better in the uh, VATS cost usage with the aligned thing, and the true barrel to keep that uh, as true stock, sorry, to keep that hip fire accuracy good because we've got a medium scope, so that's going to be pretty worthless at close range, so we won't have a reliable hip fire to anything that is too close. And one of the biggest difference with Fallout 4 and um, Fallout 76's lever action rifle, despite the reload thing being fixed in Fallout 76, is that this thing had pretty poor hip fire accuracy, even with the steady hands perk. So, being able to hip fire this thing with decent accuracy at close range, allowing you to put a scope on, adds to the weapon's versatility a bit. And a lot of that is true with a lot of the, uh, no pun intended, by the way, um, with all of the uh, sniper weapons in the game, a lot of them you can tune to have great hip fire accuracy, which is cool. Got a suppressor too for sneaking. For getting that extra damage. 94 damage without any perks onto it, which is actually kind of good because if we compare that to the 10 mil sub, although that thing's going to be firing a lot faster, I think the damage per shot is a lot more impressive. So what we'll do is we'll chuck on some of these perks, like the rifleman perks. Definitely pick lock, definitely chuck that on. That'll that'll times your damage by 10, and that's multiplicatively speaking as well. That's fake advice. Don't actually follow that. Um, instead of using the defensive perks like Serendipity, I've actually filled that up with uh, Four Leaf Clover this time. So, again, I'm not going to be at low health, so uh, what I'll find is I'm not getting crits as often, but that'll hopefully bring more crits to the table if I want to be utilizing that. Gonna using this thing with Sneak Attack Criticals, so we've got to make sure this is uh, all proper and well done, and that means we're getting 3.75 times additive bonuses. It's like a three point. It's, it's weird. I don't think they're multipliers anymore. But we've do have got a couple of multipliers. We've got tenderizer, which is nice, ten percent more. And we've also got follow through, which is going to be massive during this. So, um, if we can get a maybe a shot on the torso for the first one, just an easy one, and then follow it up with a headshot, I think we can pretty much two shot kill anything that won't withstand the one shot. And we can also make them explode too. So that's helpful. I do believe this thing does carry the follow-through bonus if you are in caution at the time. It, it definitely carries the damage over time when you're using Strangleheart, so I've got no reason to believe that it does, so there's a little bit of a hidden synergy for you. Righto, there's the build, let's go. Okay, so this is the anti-armor one with the starlit paint, and I've also got a BE one with the uh, wooden inlay paint. And if you notice on paper, this thing's rate of fire with the prime receiver is 5, which is the exact same as a hardened receiver, except doing more damage against the scorched thingies. This is rate of fire of 6, and if I put a tuned or hair trigger receiver on that, that doesn't go to a 7 or anything, it just stays at a 6. I imagine that... Like, it might move up a couple of decimal places to make it a little bit quicker. But since this thing fires so slow anyway, um, not worth doing. And because you lose that on damage. But I think it will get a slight rate of fire boost out of it. So what we're going to do is mag dump both of these and we'll figure out how long it takes. Uh-huh. And then this one. Pretty clear difference to me. Okay, so here we are outside of the Smash Repairs joint, and I'm picking up my Commodore tomorrow, so I'm feeling pretty good. Wearing the Starlet Sniper outfit, you might have noticed that skin on the uh, rifle, but we've got sunglasses, which, you know, are super useful when using at night, but apparently we can see properly, so that's all good. So 674 on the head, and then... You didn't see that. We followed up with an extra 400 damage, which is uh, pretty good. You have to actually concentrate a little bit here because I'm whiffing these easy, easy shots, which I wouldn't allow to fly our next comms, so 
to make sure Winter doesn't miss any 93% shots like he already has during my playthrough, we've got to be a little bit more, uh, I suppose, uh, uh, we go pay more attention. I forget the word. Uh, attentive. Yes, that's the one. Attentive to where our bullets are going. Now, we are using hit scan weapon. We've got full adrenaline at this point. Not enough to kill a level hundy uh, doggo there. Not a huge deal. And like I was thinking before, if I get one in the torso, doing the torso will do it. But if we want to get really high damage numbers, we can hit him in the head after that. Alright, this is the warm up and it's over. I'm actually not used to them surviving the one shot. Righto, let's, let's move on to the back. Hopefully we can improve our aim. Okay, we've sprinted around the place now, and we'll just blast these super mutants. One-shot kills. Don't know about this. This is probably too overpowered. Um, we might have to take a look at this on the PTS and uh, drop the damage down another, say, 50% uh, because players aren't actually allowed to get this much damage. Fuck me, I'm terrible. Um, there, I've, I know the problem too, there's a bit of rum in me, so you might be a little bit less, uh, less normally good aimed. Can't fucking speak either. It's been a long day, alright? I'm a little, bit, a little bit sleep deprived as well. Okay, now that we're inside, I don't want to miss anymore, so we're just going to use vats. Yeah, that seems to do the job now, doesn't it? Yes, uh, we'll use vats a little bit for this section here, just so I can... Get the shots on and spot the enemies a little bit easier. What a great shot on that super mutant. Although his back was turned to us. It was a miracle that we got that second shot on. Got another crit ready. Unfortunately, the vats lock broke before I could actually get that follow-up shot. But that's okay. That guy goes down. Almost 800 damage without any additive bonuses. Maybe the hip fire is a little bit too good, you know? Need to focus a little bit. And then they found me and then they forgot where I was, even though I didn't move. I must have, uh, did the whole phantom thing. Yeah, XCOM players know what I'm talking about. We're using a ranger with a sniper weapon because we're breaking that game. Just kidding. You don't break the game because you want the game to be challenging. Some good challenging in that one, I tell you that much. Legend difficulty, that's a test of your will, your strength, your mind, and other things. Your ability not to uh, save scum. If you're playing on Iron Man mode, then, you know, you don't have to worry about that. But sometimes losing your best soldier is not good. And no, I wanted to reload, please. A thing that you could get into the habit of doing with lever guns is just topping off your mag. If there's nothing present on your screen to shoot at, you might as well hit the reload button, wherever it might be. And then, uh, chamber some rounds in that tube of it, and go from there. Interestingly, the, uh, tube being elongated by the long barrel doesn't increase your ammo capacity. This also applies to... Getting a bit sloppy here. Um... It's a friend request. I'm not accepting that. I don't know who that is. Could be anyone. Not that I, um, uh, I'm actually unable to accept any friend requests because for some reason it just doesn't pop up. That's a quantum. That's a good drop. Yeah, we're getting many nuka colas on this round. Shoot, that guy in the head wasn't moving, so if I miss that one, I'd be bad. There's a little bit of lack, uh, the scope moves around a bit, and I don't think I'm super used to that. No excuse for that, though. What's the temperature today? It's, it's 30 degrees, basically, and I'm sitting here sweating in front of my computer. These aren't prime aiming conditions. I can't keep it cool and calm when I'm currently sweating like I am. I'm sweating in all the wrong ways. Like when you're referring to people who are going really well in games and destroying everything. Man, it's, uh... Maybe it's the sunglasses. We'll take those off, and then maybe we can see better. Okay, sunglasses are off. This means my aim will become better, right? Hopefully. We've got good hip fire here, so I see no reason to aim down with the scope. We'll go for center mass here. Looks like we can take the gangrenous ones out in one shot, which is nice. These are... The uh, charred ones, however, not so much. If we get full adrenaline, we might be able to do it. That one survived. That's because he was charred. I see. 
he took excellent cover behind a jug, and you know the bullet just doesn't go through that. The force of the 45 bullet, which is the same as the submachine gun uses, so 45 ACP. Not the ones they, not 45 long Colts or 45 70s like they use in Fallout 4. That still annoys me, by the way. They've got this chambered in the same bullet that the Fixer uses. Maybe that's why the combat rifles got so much recoil, because we're supposed to, we're just supposed to realize or think that it uses 45 70s on like an automatic style, which is going to kick like a mule on Psycho buff, so that's interesting. Um, but... I think it just uses the regular 45s. I think originally, when they were going through the combat rifle and creating that for Fallout 4, it was going to be utilizing the 556 five, rounds, which is why the magazine is so big, but they might have changed it right before release. Didn't bother putting the new mag asset in. I mean, it was. It shouldn't have been too hard to create the combat rifle. It's basically a combat shotgun, but a little bit more fit, you know? It's a Wendigo around here. No wall hacks for me on this day. We'll just get in with the double bat shot there. And more bats, please. 1500 with the critical headshot. Medic's Flamer. Not a great weapon. And good. We're now over capacity because we picked up that. Um, actually, that might be the script that I need to finish today's script off. So I'm going to be using that. Also, another thing that I have considered is using chameleon armor, which we're not now. We've got shit ton of agility so our sneaking is not in reality we're not having any trouble with that but you know we've got a scope we've got good hip fight accuracy so it's something that we could consider utilizing but i'm too lazy to do it okay now that the sight lines have opened up a little bit we could probably start utilizing this thing more for a sniper roll so we'll do that banjo guy pulls out a missile launcher out of his arsehole because that's normal laser gun guy goes down, no doggers I'll have to deal with on this day. Um, there's that guy who's uh, trying to dry hump a sheet metal wall thingy. He's a little bit mad, shot him. And no, that's a different guy who decided to reverse uh, segue there for a bit, so that's interesting. See if I can't get this guy with hip fire. Pretty bad. Um, I think I've been using VATS a little bit too much and playing other games and my aim hasn't been... We're basically on console level non-aim assist aim here, so yeah. And despite my shitty aim, you'll find that this thing is actually doing well. Um, the suppressor is a lot to credit for that, but I do think that a weapon that allows you to make this much mistakes and then still go on is pretty good because that means you can have a half assed brain dead attempt like me and still go all right. We'll get some headshots on this fella. It's his head crippled. Don't think that... I think that last shot I got him in was a headshot, but must have missed the hitbox by a second there. And was that a six-shot kill? It's pretty good. Not terrible. Probably a better shot-to-kill ratio than you would get a fixer, but a fixer probably would have done that a little bit quicker, I think. Okay, so now uh, we're sort of marching towards daylight. We've got an hour of in-game time to get this done and then get the Scorch Beast on the way before we uh, lose out on our giant damage increase. We'll go for the legs here because... Oh, nice. It's a pretty interesting way to go about it, Mr. Mylurk. Oh, was that a 71% whiffer? I reckon it was. Nice one. Uh, we'll utilize the scope on this to attack him from long range here. We're going to get super penalized by the uh, suppressor here. If you're out of range on your thing, it'll drop off to just half of your damage. We're still getting the sneak bonuses. Actually, no, we're not because they're aggroed. But if we were, it wouldn't be so bad. Now that all of the other factions have been eliminated except for the Myalurks, we're in pretty good shape here to keep on going. Quickly now. We've got a little bit of time pressure here. He goes down. That one, despite the yellow numbers, we actually didn't get him in the head. Look at that damage difference. You'd have to be a pretty happy Myalurk if you had a shell strong enough to negate 1100 damage, you know. I think you'd be pretty wrapped about that. We'll chuck in a freeze grenade. Frozen crab stick time. Go for the legs. Like an add at 600 damage. Might as well throw some crits into the mix. If we can. 
Now, since you are reloading bullets one at a time, you can sort of uh, you get the job done without having to reload all five, but you have a significantly slower rate of fire. What you can do, nice damage over time. I don't have 20% health, so that's not going to work. But what you can do whilst your AP is regenerating is just get the reload. And if you've got the right gear, you'll be full up when you time the reload. So, you know, swings and roundabouts. There's ways you can make it work. Let's move on. As for a rifleman-based weapon, I actually do kind of rate the lever guns. Sure, the ammo capacity isn't the greatest, but couldn't bats that one. That, that threw me off. Um... And the rate of fire isn't the best, but you got to think about what other... Nice dodge, man. Uh, you got to think about what other rifleman options there are, and they're really, really slow, some of them. Hunting rifle, Gauss rifle. So I believe you'll get more sustained DPS out of this thing. He's aggroed thanks to a bunch of robots. Yep. We've got to deal with the clank armies first, and we've got a secret weapon for this sentry butt over here. Down he goes. 6,900 damage. First of all, nice. Secondly, yes, stay dead. There's another gutsy over there. If we can pick off his... Oh, yeah, thanks for the screen shake. Really needed that. Tell you what, that'll throw you off during a Scorch Beast Queen event. If we can nail his uh, thruster there, I think he may have got it. But, you know, we got to take him out. We'll just go for center mass there. Don't have to go super hardcore into it. Tell you what, if I was a little bit more patient with my shots, I think I'd be hitting them. But no, we're on a time clock here. We've got to take those risks, you know. That's a Protectron. He's weak. Another option you could do to kill robots is to attack them in their combat inhibitors. And that usually does a decent enough uh, bit of damage. It will aggro them to their mates if you don't kill them outright. So if you are taking on just robots and would lack to retain your abilities to sneak critical... What you should do is not target the combat inhibitor because if there's something aggro to them, you'll find that your ability to sneak crit them is uh, not existent. Wow, really? I know what we need. We need this high ground advantage. That'll sort them out. See? Immediately 95% shots. Uh, sorry, this is XCOM logic. Don't actually follow this advice. Pretty good streak, we got some good behavior there, and it's interesting, I've never actually seen one land on a thing before, and it totally fucking rooted his AI there. He didn't know what to do, I was sitting in front of him for like half an hour, and he was just looking at me. It was a, maybe one of the more friendly Scorch Beasts I've seen, and now that is, we're past morning now, good morning everyone, and um, we've got no extra... Um, sneak bonus now, so we'll see how we go. Yeah, right. With not that, and we could use that's criticals to boost our damage a little bit if we need to. I don't think we've we've summoned one from up there yet. There he is. Not terrible damage. Definitely not terrible with the uh, critical headshots there, but you know we could be going better. I'd love to stay in chat, Mr. Scorch Beast, but uh, I'll have you know that I've got a war to fight with Advent, so if you could just die quickly, that'd be nice. Oh, by the way, XCOM season starts after Easter, and there's a ghoul here? Huh. Movements from ghouls and Scorch at the same time. Maybe they're all buddy-buddy these days. Could be. Righto, I think we're just about done here. We've got a tiny little bit of a Drino reaction. Maybe one rank of it. Um, and a little bit of unyielding bonuses as well. That's three Scorch Beasts of the legendary variety we've pulled. Right, managed to get that guy mutated with the five shots that we had, which is, yeah, good enough. I'd rather mutate him in five and six, especially when we've only got a mag capacity of that. Luckily, this one has stayed nice and close, allowing me to get these cheap bat shots on. It's going to give us some passive rads. He's seen me, actually. Surprising. Shouldn't be surprising. We are in Nerd Rage now, so extra perception, extra accuracy, extra luck for criticals. No blight for me, so... Yeah, managed to pull a lot of damage out of our ass there on that one. Alrighty. I think you get the point of this thing. 
the point is you get very terrible legendaries when you kill stuff with it. We've had a lot of shockers this entire video, but honestly, that one takes the cake. So, it's alright. Um, if you are watching this gameplay and you are really keen on this weapon, I can probably just give this one away because, honestly, it's taking up a lot of space. I would rather use a bladed explosive just for that extra damage per shot. But this one can definitely do the job, especially if you're one of those players who likes to have the damage potential of bloodied, but at full health, you know? It's it's super useful. So, you know, if you want this, hit me up. If you're on my Discord, you get first dibs. Thanks for watching, everyone.